So I've done my best to give an introduction of each of you, and I know, Paul, you know, you've just given us a, a very good overview of, um, of yourself and what you do. Um, do you, each of you mind just giving us, if you could just tell us a little bit again about the organizations that you work for and what it is that you do? Andre, do you mind starting? Oh, your microphones are there. Of course not. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much. Wonderful to have all this excitement around here. We just spent part of the morning on the balcony talking about the health system. And to be here in the, ma in the main hall to be able to talk about what really drives us all, the durability of the uh, value creation, is really very exciting. In my introduction, you mentioned me as a champion of business as a force for good. Uh, I'm the vice president of our family company, of Man La Roche, the, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies on the planet. And in that, real, in that, in that um, surroundings, in that context, I've been able to push forward this idea of business as a net contribution to society. Um, we've done, I, I, I've spent a lot of time with WWF as well, but Pavan will talk more and better about this than I can. I can just tell you that for, two, for today, a company will find it very difficult to envisage a future which is not at least influencing the durability. Um, uh, we, we just heard about the sustainability development goal. Paul modestly did not tell you that he was one of the persons who influenced that process uh, uh, under Ban Ki-moon. And, the, and, the, and the, what was it? Under uh, Ban Ki-moon, that's right. And, and, and I think the idea that businesses no longer specialize into business um, in terms of short-term profit maximization but into a way to look at society and to serve societal needs and to make a business out of this is a particularly important development. Uh, w businesses are not there just to make money. The purpose of business is to serve a community. It's to deliver the products needed, in our case, medication, life-saving medication to patients. And that, that particular uh, activity is something that needs to be put in the center of the purpose of the company. Companies are agents of change, and they have to be good at doing that. Super. Katal, would you agree with that? Yes, I do. I mean, the, I, the institute I work with is called the Hoffman Global Institute for Business and Society. So you see the link. Thanks, thanks for the cue. And so for me, I work in uh, INSEAD. It's a business school. Uh, it's an international business school with a campus uh, south of Paris in Fontainebleau, one in Singapore and one in Abu Dhabi. And uh, I spent my whole career working on sustainable development with NGOs, with governments, and with the UN. And I joined INSEAD last year to create that institute because personally I really strongly think that the change we need now is the change in business. And transforming business education to contribute to that is what we need. And this is exactly the mandate of, of the uh, institute that, that I'm leading. Uh, I think we have a lot of social entrepreneurs and impact entrepreneurs in the room here. Uh, we probably have a lot of B Corps. I need to give a shout out also to my colleague at the B Lab France. But we need much more than that. We need that movement to go beyond these uh, uh, enterprise to really uh, infiltrate all businesses. So our commitment as a school is to promote business as a force for good and is to make sure that everybody who comes on our campus lives aware of the sustainable de development goals, aware of their responsibility in terms of their contribution and equipped to be managers and to be business leaders that will integrate that at the heart of the company. So very concretely, it means that we need to change the courses, not just add something on climate change at the beginning of the curriculum to raise awareness, but we need to teach students how to integrate that when you do uh, accounting, when you do finance, when you develop a strategy. So we need to make sure it permeates everything that we do. So that's our mandate. The edu education, bringing sustainable um, thought processes into business. Weave it in to make sure it's not an afterthought. It's not a module that uh, those who already believe it's important take, but it's everybody who comes to get an education in business understands and knows how to place at the heart of the organization they will lead and manage. We're not there. We have a lot of work to do. So as educators, this is our responsibility. So um, uh, having this school and others join that movement is something rather new. And this is what I think we all are you know, committing to pushing forward. 
new, radical, and required is what I would say. Correct. Uh, Pavan, can you tell us a bit more about what you're doing at WWF? Sure, yeah. I chair the uh, governing board at WWF. Uh, Worldwide Fund for Nature is a huge organization whose purpose is the conservation and sustainable use of nature. Uh, we are more than 7,500 people. We are in 100 plus countries. And we are supported by probably many of you, more than 5.2 million supporters around the world. Um, I also have a second job, which is to run my company called GIST, whose task and whose purpose is very close to you. We want to make corporate sustainability accessible to all. And the main way we do that is to bring a different lens on measuring performance, sustainable performance. And in that sense, we have a lot in common with INSEAD and HGIBS as well. So I think you've alluded to my next question, which is what do you think the role of large organizations is in helping to dr drive sustainable uh, sustainability in general? Don't all rush at once. I don't mind who goes first. OK, well, we can, we can go just the same way. Okay. Um, uh, for me, as I started by saying, the purpose of a business is not to make money only. Uh, it needs to be profitable. If, it, if the company is not profitable, there is no long-term future for the company either. And what we are talking about is sustainability. We need long-term thinking. But the idea today to manage a business just on the principle that you want to maximize the short-term revenue or the short-term uh, income is absolutely wrong. You need to consider the impact on the environment and on the social systems. And the, 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 the Millennium Goals we were just evoking in, uh, uh, about the United Nations have lifted a lot of people out of poverty, but at a huge social and environmental cost. That needs to be addressed. And so corporations are much better placed to be able to do this because they represent 60% of the value, as Paul just told us, but also because governments seem to be suffering with the consequences of um, the social uh, damage done over the last 50 years. So essentially, if, the, if organizations don't get behind it, there's a limited amount of progress. I can see you nodding your head there, Paul. <laughs> well, Colin, Power in his, uh, Colin Mayer in his book, Prosperity, talks about social corporations that profitably address the issues of people and planet. And I think that's why we are here. If a company operates in a way that makes the planet worse when it's already terribly stressed, that creates more inequality, why would we let these companies be around? When I was born, the average length of a publicly traded company was 67 years. Today, it dropped down to 17 years. No way. So we, well, that's what it is. So we have a responsibility to ensure that we can keep operating for the longer term also means that society accepts us. Business cannot be a bystander in a system that gives them validity in the first place. So that is really, the other reason why businesses need to play such an important role, to implement the Sustainable Development Goals cost us three to five trillion dollars a year. Currently, we're only spending about one and a half trillion dollars. So that's a big gap. So you might say, okay, that's why we have governments. But governments don't have any money anymore. The combined effect of overseas development aid is about 160 billion dollars. The numbers are going down. So there's a big gap, 160 billion dollars, two to three trillion that is needed. Houston, we have a problem. So it needs to come from the private sector, in innovation, in resources, in financing. And I would argue now, as I said before very briefly, it's actually a very profitable agenda, if people understand that. You can't boil the ocean at once or eat the elephant in one bite, but there are enough things we can do to give the people hope and courage and, and confidence, I mean, hope and confidence that we move this world in a better direction than that we're currently doing. I love what you say in terms of um, it's linked to profitability. And I'm guessing, Katal, you see that a lot in terms of the way that you're teaching at the business school to bring new leaders who are thinking quite differently. Yes, and so the, the, the whole idea is that financial profitability should not be the driver, right? I mean, this is, this is, this is a tool. So what we're after are organizations that really integrate this dimension of social and environmental impact in the way they create value. Mm -hmm. So that gives a completely different perspective on what is the core mission of an organization. And to follow up on what Paul was saying in terms of why we need businesses, of course there is this huge bill that we have to foot, and the trillions of dollars to reach the SDGs, but if we don't have business, we will not be able to change the system that we in. We won't be able to change the, the way we consider what is societal progress. 
we won't be able to integrate the value of the environment and of humans in, uh, in growth uh, either. So really uh, having business engaged and changing the mindsets of business leaders is uh, what we all need to push for uh, at this moment. Super, Pavan, I can see you've got some extra to add to that. Yeah, I was just trying to, I sometimes explain this point because people think somehow there's a conflict between purpose and profit. And I, and I usually say that as a human being, I need to breathe to live. But breathing is not my purpose. And in the same way, for it to survive, a corporation needs to be profitable. But profits are not its purpose. Its purpose is something else. It could be serving people's health. It could be serving people's education. It could be serving companies' way of measuring performance. That's purpose. So, we, I mean, we talk a lot about it, and we, we know, I mean, companies know that we need, they need to do something different, right? It's, it's not like it's hidden under a rock anymore. Companies, large organizations know there's a problem. Um, many are waking up to doing something quite different. But what sorts of things could they do on a practical level? I mean, you're all involved, and I think sometimes people go, oh, do we just stop using the plastic cups in the office? Is that what we should do? Have you got some tangible examples of things that organizations could do that maybe are a little bit outside of the, the standard box? So, so uh, this morning, um, on, on the balcony, we talked about a partnership between insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies. How can you deliver to the patient the best possible package to help to disease management and eventually cure? Um, if you do business as usual, in other words, I make a pill, uh, get to the doctor, the doctor then sells it to the patient, um, I'm not getting the same result as if I can actually use my expertise of the disease and of the healthcare environment to service the patient in a personalized manner. So why would I do such a thing? My profit would not necessarily be increased. I do such a thing because it is my mission as a company involved in healthcare to help patients to, be, to, to get better. So the values, that, the moral values we are using to take these sort of decisions are not based on short-term uh, consideration. They're based on to the best possible use of our natural resources and our, and our time in favor of the patient. It's a question of humanity. We, are, you know, we want to be able to help the, the patient in the best possible manner at the human level. Okay. It's beautiful. And I think, I, I think sometimes we can, organizations can get disconnected and think, well, it's healthcare. What's that got to do with the environment? Well, if the environment isn't great, then people get ill. We know that. I mean, the two things are connected. But I think this idea of kind of going back to the values of an organization and linking those values to something more sustainable, I can see how that would help people to think somewhat more creatively about the ideas that they come up with beyond just changing the plastic cups in the office. Uh, Paul, I can see you've got quite a few ideas there brewing. Oh, we could talk this for hours, but the first thing we, we need... Don't to hours, to, uh, we, we don't, don't have hours. We don't have hours. So I'll limit it to one or two examples. But the first thing we need to do is create amongst the people that run these companies a higher level of awareness and a higher level of willingness to engage. Uh, if a company is... The tone of a company is decided at the top. As they say, a fish starts rotting at, their, at its head. So a CEO of a company needs to, be re needs to be aware of his or her responsibilities in society. It also means responsibilities of its total impact on the value chain. You cannot outsource your value chain and outsource your responsibilities. When the Rana Plaza factory collapses, the people that sell the brands are responsible, not the 1,011 women that needlessly lost their lives. So we need to, when we are in the food business, and the forests of this world disappear, then we are responsible for the deforestation, just like we are for food waste or obesity. So taking that broader responsibility, then you'll form partnerships with people, first in your value chain, or more transformatives afterwards to solve these issues. And when you work together with people on a common objective to solve these burning issues that we deal with, climate change and inequality being the bigger ones, you find solutions that are bigger than each individually can get to. And actually, as it happens to be, in many of the cases, not all yet, but in many of the cases, these solutions are also more profitable. So you need to get companies outside of that narrow definition that I'm only here for the shareholder, the, the Friedman shareholder primacy, that I only run my businesses for the short term, that the only thing that counts is my earnings per share, and bring them to this higher level of, of reason for being. 
And when you get the companies there, they see tremendous opportunities. Now, when you bring the companies together, they can solve these issues that actually otherwise would drive their businesses down. I was in consumer goods for 10 years as CEO of Unilever. We produced a lot of plastic. That's not a good thing. We're heading to a, a level of more plastic in the oceans than fish. I don't think anybody wants that. But for each individual company to set up recycling systems in every country is impossible. So you need to work that at an industry level, across the value chain, put resources in, and then you're all better off. So on the circularity of an economy, it requires the efforts for all of us. Companies also need to take higher responsibility in their value chain around human rights. If we keep expensing people as if they don't, that you don't care, uh, and, and have child labor, slave labor, or if we try to avoid paying taxes so countries can function, or if we have um, absence of decent living wages, we create problems in society that are far bigger than if we collectively would address them and ensure that everybody can participate. So a new social contract would be another example where you want companies to go together and where you can show that if you do that together, you're all better off. These are examples of these new forms of partnerships, new ways of thinking that we need to get to. And, and it is happening. This is not just wishful thinking. You can see it happening. Yeah. Have so, you got some ideas? Go yeah, just, uh, just uh, to add to that on, in a very concrete manner uh, in, uh, in organization as well. It's, it's very important that um, this commitment is not just a commitment of the CEO of the, of the company, right? Uh, we, a, a lot of organizations that are moving in that direction have shown that employee engagement around the topic is key. Having sustainability be part of the governance, embedded in the governance at the board also matters. And I'm going to give a, a cue to Pavan um, uh, to say that what's extremely important in what you need to change is to measure. Measure what's your contribution, measure what uh, it is that you take from nature and from people in your business model and that what you give back. And that's my, my cue to Pavan. Because How do we measure this then, Pavan? You know, you've got all the answers, I'm told. Well, some of the answers. But I mean, the first point is that uh, Peter Drucker used to say that you cannot manage what you do not measure. And I think that's the first realization. And then you've got to realize that actually what we are managing as company directors or as company CEOs is actually our total impact on society, not just our impact on the financial wealth of the shareholder. We are measuring not just changes in financial capital, but also human capital, which is the, the knowledge and skills and, and health of our employees. We are measuring our impacts on natural capital, which means how much have we emitted pollutants how much have we done CO2, carbon dioxide, greenhouse gases? What about water pollution, land pollution, etc.? And our impact on society. Have we actually improved the way that our industry works? Have we improved our relationship with consumers or worsened them? Have we paid our taxes on time? Have we avoided them? Have we paid the dues for being a citizen in a responsible world? So we have to account for all of that, which means measuring your impacts on financial and human capital and social capital and natural capital. It's four dimensions of wealth. You know, this one-dimensional capitalism that we have been wedded to ever since Milton Friedman said that the only thing that matters was shareholder capitalism is one of our biggest mistakes in history. And the sooner we get out of this, I think the better it will be for all of you, all of us. Can I, I just want to add that. Wait. This is true at the level of the enterprise, but this is true also at the, at the national level. Uh, you know, rethinking GDP, there was a previous conversation on that here. This is also true for education and for business schools, right? Currently, business schools are evaluated based on the, primarily on the salaries, the level of salaries of the students coming out on the market. This also needs to be rethought, rethought completely along the same lines. So really con re con accounting for the, co the full contribution of an organization, whatever it is, NGO, government, or corporation, is what we, it's critical to move into the same direction. There is a lot of food for thought there, isn't there? My goodness, give them all a huge round of applause. We've run out of time. So Andre, Paul, Cattell, and Pavan, thank you so much for joining us today. Huge round of applause.